I think I saw a post and the person said, do you know that in the next three years, 1990 will be 30 years ago? Exactly. And the person said, are you sure? 1990 yes. that, you know, I, I kind of feel if, if and the person said, or the person wrote that, in his mind, 30 years ago is 1970. But I'm almost in 2020. I can't even believe and it. And that means that 20 years post the second millennium. God. To pass. I, and I'm, I'm, I, I, don't, I, you know, I don't even feel it. It's so real, but yet so imperceptible. Anyways, so I have in studio Apioko Ashong Abe, um, who's um, Apioko, what, what is your thing, Seth? Mm. Apioko is, yes, literally <laughs> activist, uh, works at City. And a member of the class of 2017. No. 2007 alumna. Yeah. Forgive me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm slow today. TI's class of 2007 alumna. Kwesi is also an educationist mm-hmm. and a member of the 2009 class. And we have our own Anis Hafa, the Gate Institute, chairman of the TI's board. Anis, good to have you. Good to see you. I need some of your energy, some of your effervescence. <laughs> Always going. Anis. Let me first say commiserations on Kofi Annan's death. Because you, you, also, you also was the first book I read on him. You spoke a bit about In fact, you educated me on Kofi Annan. So it, was, it must have been big. So let's talk about TIS. Um, you're 15 years old. Yes, we are. Well, I have heard a lot about TIS. And let me confess. What I hear about TIS, it's a very good school. But it's a posh school. Yeah, it's a posh, Charlie. It's a good school, but Charlie, you know... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what I've heard. This matter. So I don't know who starts, who will bear the cats, and who, who, I don't know. You went there, you also went there. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But I mean, TIS yeah, 15, so we started in 2003, and okay. I was actually a pioneer, so was Kwesi. Oh. Yes, yes. And what I'll say is that it's not posh. Okay. Um, somebody might talk about the school fees and whatnot, but mm. you see, it's an international school, and the programs that we run mm. are not your typical GES program. Okay. Which means that there are lots of things that we're paying for mm-hmm. that we don't necessarily have control over. Mm-hmm. But what I can tell you is that if you go to TIS, you're coming out with a brilliant education. Mm-hmm. You're a holistic human being. Mm. So it's not just about academia. Your co-curricular plays a very key part. Mm-hmm. You're, you're gathering skills. But a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated International Literacy Day. Mm -hmm. And this year, internationally, the conversation around literacy is not just reading, writing, speaking nicely. It's about acquiring skills for development. Yes, skills for survival. And at TIS, that's what we learn. So, Bernard, you work with me. See all the things I can do. That's TIS right there. (laughs) Your core is your typical polymath. She does everything. So, tell me about the kinds of programs you run. You're saying you don't just run GSO. Yeah. What other programs does uh, TIS run? I mean, there's all kinds of programs. I mean, even as a, it's, it's funny I mentioned Apioko as a polymath because mm. it's almost like I feel like everyone, a lot of people around me I know right now, I feel like they're polymaths mm. because of a lot of these programs. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, there's the IB program. Yeah. So within that, there's things like, you know, theory of knowledge. Mm. And theory of knowledge, I mean, I would have never thought about philosophy mm. as a 14, 15 year old in any other circumstance, I don't think. I wasn't mm. that interested in it at the time, mm. but I was pushed to think in a way that made me you know, develop in a way that I don't think I would have developed otherwise. So, mm. um, so there's you do the IB program, do the IB but you, do, program. you don't do the IGCSE. We do the IGCSE. Do that well. So IGCSE for grade nine and ten. Then when you get to um, grade eleven and twelve, then you do IB. Do you do the O levels, A levels? No. no. So you no. shift. So you have a bit, a, a, bit, a bit of that. Shift, but yeah. moving forward, um, mm-hmm. TIS will be running the full IB plethora of programs. So mm. from the MYP, which is the Middle Years program, to um, TIS, I, I must announce mm. we're starting a primary school in 2020. So it's no longer the secondary school. No, 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 no. So right from the beginning through to the top, you're doing the full IB mm. program. So. You say you are international. Does that mean that your education doesn't have local content? It does. Does it? Yes. And in fact, if you're you're studying a course like the IB, Mm. it's very much local relevance for an international setting. Mm. So if you're studying literature, for example, you are versed in African literature. Mm. You are learning Amatai, you're learning Achibi, you're learning Wationgo, you're learning... um, uh, um, Nawal El Sadawi of Egypt, mm. is, and, and you are supposed to use these skills that you acquire mm-hmm. to recognize that wherever you go, you have to come back and give back to your society. Okay. Yes, and that is the importance. If it's mathematics, mm. the examples that we use in, in class, the practical things we do, mm. they are very much centered around the things we see around us. Mm. Okay. So we're not just talking about dollars because it's a lingua franca for the world. Mm. We're also talking uh, um, uh, about um, cities and, mm. and how we're spending those. We yeah. have a tech shop in the school, for example, 
which is run by the students. Okay. So you're learning business within the local context. Right, and I think one of the really important things to also hit on is that, so one of the big tenets of TIs is also international mindedness. Mm -hmm. Now when I think about it, the way international, and students interpret international mindedness in very different ways. So for example, for me, I did high level history, it was like my favorite subject at the time. And high level history meant you were diving really deep into African history. So since I graduated, I've been in just different countries within Africa because I want to explore what a Pan-African mindset can even look like, can even think, how I can even think if I'm thinking from the context of a Namibian or from a Kenyan or from an Ethiopian or from an Egyptian or from a South African mm. and see how we can incorporate some of those learnings and what we're doing here in mm. Ghana. Because he lives and works in Kenya, by the way. Yeah. So let me bring in uh, uh, Anis now. So you are an educationist. I know you're very passionate about quality education. How did you get associated with... Um, oh, okay, let me rephrase the question. How long has your affiliation been with TIA? Uh, I think it's been about, I think I'm on my fourth year. Okay. But it's a very interesting uh, coincidence. Uh, mm. I was invited to serve uh, as a board member. Okay. So I went and we interviewed the, uh, the headmaster, that, uh, the principal that we have now, mm. uh, Dr. Ken Dabar. And uh, after that, I went to the next meeting. And I was unanimously appointed to chair the board. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, my friend? I just I came for a week. And I've been uh, uh, the uh, chairman of the board of governors ever mm. since. So what's the focus of the school in this, this, this 15 years? You know, and let me give you a practical example. Mm. I was invited by the African Leadership University uh, to speak uh, as a guest speaker in Mauritius. Mm. And guess who I found? Quisi. He was also there. <laughs> <Quisi. laughs> I wasn't joking about this. And that you, you've come a long way, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then, not only that, uh, you want to, they are highly selective mm -hmm. in terms of the people, like what he said, who are international minded. But, you know, and then you also begin to look at a wave that is sweeping Africa mm -hmm. in terms of the kind of qualities that we want in leadership. And which is what. Uh, TIS now is really pushing. Mm. Now, leadership is a very interesting concept. And frankly, I would like the African heads of states to even understand what it means to be a leader. For us, a leader is someone who served. But what you learn from uh, TIS, and especially the International Baccalaureate Program that you're doing, is a section called the uh, Creativity Activity Service, okay. which is where you give of yourself, mm. which is where you learn for the first time that life isn't all about you. You know, but it's uh, you want to be able to be in a position where you want to serve other people. Okay. But then to serve other people, you need to have a scale. Mm. You know, and I've been really be privileged to have been on some of the uh, cast projects, uh, especially in parts of uh, villages in the Boto region, mm. where we have low TIS children teaching other children mathematics, science, English, and not only that, mixing cement, sand, and concrete to build houses for them. Mm. and putting roofs on them. You know, this is really where your humanity begins to show. Mm. But you know, at the end of the day, and for me, my concern really, is how do we pick and choose the best mm -hmm. of uh, the best practices from particular uh, uh, curricula and see how we can extend it through the country. Okay, so let's talk about the forum. I understand you're doing a TIS 15 educational forum. Uh, talk to me about that. What's, what's that about? Okay, so the forum, I mean, really, we're saying that if we're doing all this in TIS and you're in your little corner, at any point in time, you have just about 350 students within the four walls of TIS. Mm. That's really small. Right on, my, you know, my husband went to precept, like yeah, you did. Yeah, His graduating class, there are 742 <laughs> of them. That's more than double what TIS has at any given time. So we're, there are very few of us. My graduating class, there are 39 of us. Yeah, so it means that um, we have to give back. We have to find a way, like Anish just said, to mm -hmm. spread this wave across the country. Mm. The education forum is a first step at doing that. Mm. So, I mean, together with the Ministry of Education, we, uh, one of the panelists, for example, is the current headmistress of Achimota School. Mm. We're inviting people within the education space within Ghana to share with them what we've experienced, what mm. we've found with real case studies mm -hmm. that work. And really take this education thing into our own hands. Because mm. if we're going to leave it for the government, it's clear that we're not going to go anywhere. So is this open to the public then? It is open to the public. Where is it happening? When is it happening? It's happening at the Tama International School. Um, it's at, I mean, just behind Don Bosco. Okay. Uh, you know, um, on the Michel Camp Road. Mm -hmm. And it's on the 1st of October, okay. um, which is Monday at 2 p.m. So okay. if you could get there for one, that would be great. Great. And who are the speakers? So, Chrissy. 
Yours is taking. Right. This is, this yeah. is moderating. Absolutely. So I'll be I'll be moderating it. Mm. Um, coming just bring kind of the perspective of someone who's been working in kind of experiential project based student centered education for the for the last few years. Mm. So we have Honorable Mr. Anis Hafa, mm -hmm. um, the founder of the Gates Institute. We have Dr. Conrad Hughes, um, the principal of uh, International School of Geneva. Dr. Fatma Odayam Odaymat, uh, principal of Arayan. Mr. Israel Titiofe, the principal of SOS. Uh, Ms. Aida Abikwe, the Vice President of Lua Secondary School, and Ms. Joyce Addo, the Headmistress of Achimota. Great. So this is a, a meeting place to discuss the future of education. Right. And we wanted to bring in very different perspectives mm. to make sure that we are actually having a rigorous discourse about education. So it's not a kind of a one-sided exactly. discussion. Well, congratulations on your 15th. I'm sure we'll talk again about other things you're doing. Definitely. This is just to focus on the event. Definitely. It's on the it's first, on the 1st of October, 2 p.m. TIS on the Michelle Camp Road behind Don Bosco. Anis Hafa is the board chairman. Kwesi Didako is an educationist, a member of the 2009 alumni, alumni class. Mm. And our own Apioko Ashong, Abi Litra. You have a lot of things. Apioko is a literary activist. You have everything. Yeah, Apioko is just a big woman. <laughs> and it's good to see you. It's always a pleasure. Keep the fire, keep the energy. You, you inspire me, you know. Do I? Of course, when I hear you in the morning, Is committed, it? talking about banking, ah. insurance, mm. uh, the maintenance of our roots, I tell you. the corruption in high places. I said, that's my boy. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're doing for us what some of us could not do, but keep it up. Thank you, guys. Keep, Thank you, you keep the fire burning. Congrats to TIS on 15. Thank you very much. I have to end because I have another interview. I have another interview.